What's up, YouTube? Brian Van Dyne here. I got a question from a subscriber, Mac. He said, I don't know if you've covered this, but I, I basically, you know, got a question for you. This is the question he said. How do you get load info with or without a broker? What's in the info? And then how do you do the billing? How do you do you sit, how do you generate the bills? How do you send them out? How do you do the invoicing? That type of stuff. So thank you, Mac, for a great question. Um, let's get into it. So when I first started my dump truck business, I didn't necessarily use a broker. Um, a lot of broke most not like 99% of the people that consider themselves brokers or dispatchers. They will charge you, you know, a percentage or a set fee every time they give you work or, you know, to, you know, all that stuff is, uh, there's tons of stuff. So each broker is different. So typically, um, I consider myself kind of a dispatcher nowadays, um, cause I do dispatch a lot of trucks. I do send out work and I do collect a small fee for that, um, and so typically how it works is I have a customer that reaches out to me and they say, hey, Brian, I need five trucks this day. I say, okay, you got it. And then I call up my buddies and then I say, hey, man, uh, I got a job. Do you want work or no? You know, yes or no. Typically they say yes or they say, no, I'm busy. I say, okay. And then they ask me, what is it? You know, what are they hauling? Where are they hauling it to and from? Is the day expected to be a long day or a short day? Right? And I also tell them what the rate is. So the way this works is I charge my customers a set amount of rate. And then what I do is I pay the guys that I dispatch for a lower rate. And that's how I collect my dispatching fee. And the way that works for those, the people that I dispatch is they get paid really fast. Same day, next day, you know, within a week. So around here in Washington, that's like unheard of. That never happens, guys. In Washington, you're waiting net 30. Net 30 or you're waiting 45 days or you're waiting... 90 days, I've been strung out one time for 180 days, you know, um, f from a company. So that's, in Washington, that's the way it works. You're their bank. Um, I'm not going to get too far into that. I'm just saying. So what I do is I collect all that info from the company and then I send a text message to my, to one of the other trucks and I say, okay. Your start time is 7.30. Start here empty. You're hauling to here loaded. Uh, if they're hauling back, I'm saying this is the product you're hauling back and you're hauling on this account from this pit. Um, and then at the end of the day, I need to know how many hours you make. And then I need a truck ticket. I always, uh, from now on, I've been requesting that I am a... Additional insured, so they have to get me a, a certificate of insurance, you know, um, because that money is going through my company. So if something were to happen, I have to cover my tail, and that's how you do that. You just get a, get a certificate of insurance, listing your company on their insurance. Um, and so there's that. And then, so at the end, so let me show you what a truck ticket looks like. Okay, so this is a truck book. This is a generic, this is what mine looks like. Everybody has their own little twist to it. But this is a truck ticket book. And uh, I have three copies in mine. You really don't need three. You can just have two, but I like to have three. Um, and so the driver will fill this out. The date, truck number, the type of truck, whether it's a solo, a super solo. They'll type in the rate. Depending on who we're working for, there's a different rate for each customer. 
Uh, customers that have been with me for a while, uh, dirt customers, they're paying $145 an hour for a super dump. Asphalt customers, they're paying $150 an hour. I mean, that's just the way, that's the way the cookie crumbles in Washington, right? And then at the end of the day, they can put truck hours. And then this other stuff is for my equipment because I do have equipment, right? A lot of trucking companies don't have equipment, so you won't need all this stuff right here. The move-in rate, truck charges, move-in charge. You, that's, you know, you don't have to worry about that. All my invoices have a number. So this truck ticket is actually a, uh, it's basically an invoice, but I, this is the actual invoice, right? So the truck driver fills this out, rented by, customer, job location, start time, stop time, and then they put what they're hauling here, and then they can put import, export, 5 eighths minus, import, export, inch and a quarter minus, half inch HMA, they can put whatever the material is, sand, concrete, asphalt, blah, blah, blah. You get the picture. From, and then you put the job site here or from the rock quarry to the job site or to the rock quarry or wherever, you know, the two. And then they keep a tally of how many loads. And then uh, we don't really use this column, but if the customer requests, they want to know how long it's taken for each load, then, then we can keep track in this column. We normally don't do that because customers don't really care. They just want to know how many loads. That's the main thing they want to know. How many loads did you haul in the overall time, right? And then uh, I always tell my drivers at the end, they put how many hours at the bottom. And then they all, the customer has to sign the book. If they don't sign this, then you might get gypped. <laughs> That's the way some of these companies work out out here if you don't sign this they don't get a copy you won't get paid it's never happened to me but i do know people who have gotten gypped because they didn't give them a truck ticket and they didn't get signatures and they got gypped so right here signature of this truck invoice will be considered your notice of intent to lien this project if necessary interest at one percent per month will be charged on all past due accounts terms net 30 copy an invoice to be emailed so this is what I do. So at the end of the day, this is all filled out. The customer gets the pink copy. I keep the white and the yellow. And if the customer ever calls me up and say, hey, I want a copy of that, which never happens usually, I can mail this copy to them or I just usually taking a picture of it and sending it to them is sufficient. Sometimes they actually want a physical copy. And that's when you take this, rip it out, and then you mail it to them. Right? Okay. Also, when you get your dispatch, it needs to include billing information. If you don't have billing information and you're getting a dispatch from somebody you don't know, they're about to rip you off. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. Or if their billing information is not that, it's not cut and dry, like this is the company name. This is the billing address. This is the email. You know, if it does not have all that stuff and the rate and it's not cut and dry, they're, they might be trying to pull a fast one on you. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you over here. Here is my QuickBooks Online, right? We're going to show you roughly how this works. I'm not going to show you everything because... If I pop in a customer, it's going to populate all this stuff right here. And I'm not throwing my customers' uh, names out there for people to, you know, try and steal my customers. Or, you know, people to harass my customers. So, I'm just going to show you. You type in a name here. Boom. The customer information is automatically populated by QuickBooks Online. That's who I generally go through. I don't do credit cards. Unless they specifically request I do a credit card and then I add a 3.5% fee because that's what QuickBooks charges me. So bank transfer is my preferred payment method, but you know they can send checks in the mail. So this is all filled out, net terms, invoice date, due date, this all gets filled out. PO is typically a number that the dispatcher will give you or the customer will give you if they're on a scale of operation that is 
large enough that they generate PO numbers. A lot of the smaller customers don't care about PO numbers. They don't make PO numbers. Um, and sometimes what they'll have you do uh, is you'll put the house address or you'll put the job address in the PO number, right? So let me just, let's just move on. So here's the service date. This is how I do an invoice. I'll just show you real quick for the rock quarry. This is how I would fill it out. So I go service date. Okay, boom. Let's just say we're working on Monday. Then from the rock quarry, we get paid by tonnage, right? So I type in T, boom, tonnage haul. It already comes up, right? Then in the description, right? I type in truck 10 hauling four and then i type in they the rock quarry itself gives me a statement printout and i can also go back and look at my truck ticket it'll say who the rock is being hauled for what the product is and then i also i love to add the ticket numbers because here's why at the end of the day you know, 45 days from when you did the work to when you get paid. Let's say the customer is like, oh, they never hauled that load for me. That never happened. If you have those truck ticket numbers written down, you can go back to the quarry and say, hey, I need these, these exact tickets printed out because the customer is denying that he did the work or that I did the work, which this case has never happened to me, but it's just one of those things that I've always felt really comfortable doing because it's just one of those COAs, you know, cover your, you know, assets basically, you know, so I always put the truck ticket numbers and then, you know, this gets filled up. And then, uh, when I'm hauling for the rock quarry, it's usually by the ton, right? So then I put in, okay, let's say we hauled a hundred tons, right? So a super dump hauls 25 tons Per load, so that's four loads. Just say we hauled four loads at a rate of twelve dollars a ton. Boom, there it goes. The QuickBooks automatically populates this for me, right? This is QuickBooks Online. Okay, and then down here, look at this. We got a cert, we got a message. And if you got a certain customer you want to say a certain thing to, then you can type it in right here. Um, I just always just go with the generic. Save time by paying your invoice electronically. This is our preferred method of payment as it reduces paper and a chance of theft. Contact us if you would like to pay electronically and we can get it set up. So streamline your process. I do not send out paper uh, invoices. I don't do paper invoices. All my customers know I got to have a valid email address to send it to. I do request that I have their billing information, their actual billing address. But I don't, I've never sent, okay, I've sent one, one paper estimate and that was it. My whole time I've ever been in business, only one paper invoice I've sent. And that was from a guy who didn't even have an email, which the guy had been in business for apparently like 30 years and he was just one of those old timers Everything was on paper. Nothing was on the computer. And I was just completely shocked. It blew my mind. I was like, hey, man, I need a, I need a, a valid email to send my invoice to. And uh, he's like, I don't have one. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have one? He's like, I don't have one. And I'm like, if if that customer wouldn't have been a from a reputable uh, contact of mine, I wouldn't have done the work. I wouldn't have done the work because, you know, I... I've just never dealt with somebody who didn't even have an email. Like that just sounds barbaric to me. So anyways, back to me and how I do my invoicing. So uh, I always send the invoice through the email. You know, there's a pay now button because I have that all set up. So it's super easy. Um, and then, you know, the, if let's say if a customer doesn't pay. So... As you guys have seen on my books before, I posted a snapshot. There were some overdue invoices. So let me just let me just go back and show you real quick. Uh, do you want to leave without saving? No. Okay. Right. Do you want to leave without saving? Yes. 
actually messed that one up. Okay, so we're just gonna do this real quick. The tricky thing is trying to show you how to do this without showing all my customer info. So we're just gonna click on this real quick. Whoa. So in QuickBooks Online, you click on Sales, you go to Customers, okay, Brian, okay, this is me, I'm just going to show you guys on this, we created this a long time ago. Okay, so this Let's just say this is the, the customer, Brian. This is me, right? I'm going to show you guys how to send a statement. Let's just say I owe myself, you know, a few thousand dollars and it's overdue. This is what I do. I click on new transactions statement. Boom. Just like that. And then next thing you know, you come over here and you figure out what the start date of the balance is or when you did the work. You know, usually put the start date before that or else it will show balance forwarded. Um, and then you do the statement and then you can come down here and you can do a print or preview, you know, and then if you like it and it looks good, then you can save and send. Boom. And it just gets emailed to them. Easy peasy. One, two, three. You know, so that's uh, as quick a video as I can show you guys um, how I send my invoices, how I do my invoicing. Um QuickBooks Online, I love it. It's been great to me. Um, we started out with QuickBooks Desktop, and uh, it was cheaper, definitely cheaper. But as my business was growing, QuickBooks Online was far more, uh, it was worth it to switch to QuickBooks Online. Even though there's a monthly fee, it was just far more worth it to me because all of the receipts and stuff go through the bank that automatically get transferred into QuickBooks. You just have to review it and then accept all the stuff. So anyways, guys, don't forget to pound that like button, pound that subscribe button, and join for more great content. This video came out to the members first. So please, guys, if you want good content, join now. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.